at 40 and still single, that's like being past your expiration date. My husband is rich and handsome and a genius, Emma declared in our family's backyard. The gathered crowd began to murmur, looking at us with confused expressions. It was understandable, after all, we were the only siblings raised in this house together since we were kids. I've always been at the mercy of Emma's whims. Each time I was told to endure it, because I was the older sister, but I couldn't take it anymore. I've decided not to hold back my feelings towards Emma any longer. My name is Emma Brown, a 40-year-old housewife. I used to work in medical administration, but I quit when I had my daughter, who's now five. I spend more time at home, but waiting for my kindergartner daughter and my loving husband to come home is always a joy. Emma, I'm home. Welcome back, Charlotte. Daddy, Dad's home. Daddy, welcome back. Hey Charlotte, did you have fun at kindergarten today? Yep, guess what happened today? My husband, Noah, is a doting father, always actively involved in parenting and household chores. Even though I'm a stay-at-home mom, he makes sure to give me days off from household duties when he's not working. He's an understanding husband. Wow, you've drawn this really well. Right. This is mommy, this is me, and this is daddy. That's amazing. Thank you, I'm so happy. Our five-year-old daughter Charlotte loves drawing, especially pictures of our family. Her shy smile when praised by her dad is just adorable. You've really drawn this well. Do you enjoy drawing? Yeah. I'm always grateful for my two loved ones. One day, I received a call from an unknown number. It seemed suspicious, but it could be about my family, so I answered. Hello. Oh, Emma, you're still alive. It was Emma, my sister with whom I had severed ties fifteen years ago. Ha, huh, Emma, why do you have my number? With enough money, it's easy to find out. Ah, I know where you live too. Don't try to run away. What do you want? We've cut ties with you and your family. Emma's high-handed attitude was about to provoke me, but I restrained myself and asked her. Oh right, Grandma passed away. I didn't want to contact you, but it was her will. She wants you at the funeral. All right, when is it? She informed me of the funeral's date and ended the call. Just before hanging up, Emma mentioned she had found my social media account. Looks like you're living quite modestly, still single, I presume. No ring in sight and not much activity on your account. Hope you don't end up lonely in your old age. I could hear her trying to suppress her laughter. The memory of Emma's sneering face from the past came to my mind, stirring up emotions. But before I could respond, the call ended. Emma and I were siblings from a reasonably well-off family, or rather we were. Our strict grandfather and kind grandmother raised us. Our father, their son, always followed grandfather's orders, while our mother, his wife, was always trying to please him. Growing up in such a family, I was always treated differently from my sister Emma. The reason it seemed was something as trivial as Emma resembling our father more. I, who took after our mother, was cherished by her and our kind grandmother. But in a household where the patriarchy prevailed, not being favored by my grandfather and father was a significant issue. Emma's whims were always indulged, and I, being the elder sister, was always forced to endure. Whether it was toys, hobbies, or even meals, it wasn't rare for things to become Emma's only. This had been the case ever since I could remember, back when Emma was just a baby. Yet, I think our family had money. However, I wasn't allowed to go to a private high school. Instead, I attended a local public high school. Emma, on the other hand, got into a prestigious private school for girls, famous in the area. She was driven to and from school every day, and after school, she would invite friends over for tea. There was this one time I happened upon that scene, unaware. I walked into the garden where Emma and her friends were having tea. Right, isn't it? Oh, is that you, Emma? Uh, yes. 
Could you please disappear somewhere? Your gloomy face is bothering me. In this house where Emma's whims were law, she grew up spoiled. She was mean in front of me and played the good child in front of our grandparents and father. As I walked away, she answered her friend's question with a sneer. Yes, my sister, hopeless and so dull. After graduating high school, I saved up and went to a vocational school to become a medical administrative assistant. I felt fulfilled being able to help not only patients, but also doctors and nurses. I met William Thompson, an elite and very smart man, soon after I started working. He was a trainee doctor at the hospital where I worked. We went out for meals occasionally, and there was a good vibe, but I felt like we needed a push. I talked to my mom about him during a rare visit home, and then Emma showed up. She usually avoided speaking to me. I stopped talking abruptly and waited for Emma to leave, but unexpectedly, she smiled warmly and approached me. Emma, you've met someone wonderful, haven't you? I'm envious. Can you tell me about it? Despite all the terrible things Emma had done, I still wanted to get along with her as my sister. Her conversation and smile lifted my spirits, and in that happy moment with my mom, I shared about William. You should definitely make a move, Emma. Go for it. Mom seemed to agree, and encouraged by them, William and I officially started dating. Emma, we're now a couple. Thank you. Congratulations, Emma. I'd love to meet him at our house sometime. I felt relieved seeing Emma's smiling face. I thought her attitude had changed for the better, becoming more mature and reasonable since I moved away from home. I thought our relationship was finally getting better, but then I had to sever ties with Emma because she stole my fiancé. My relationship with William had been going well for several years, and he finally proposed. We had promised to marry. We were so happy. Before visiting my parents to announce our engagement, I decided to introduce William to Emma first. We arranged to meet the three of us. When Emma saw my fiancé, her face lit up as she spoke to him. I never knew you were such a wonderful person. I wish I had met you first. Oh, stop it, Emma. Just kidding. I was happy that Emma, who used to be so cruel, could now joke around with me. Please take good care of my sister. I will, absolutely. I was so moved by their exchange that I started to cry. Emma gently patted my back. Grateful for their warmth, I thought about how happy I was going to be. A month later, as I was thinking about visiting my parents with William, he called me. Hey, William, I was just about to call you. We should visit my parents soon. I'm sorry. What? Why? I can't marry you, Emma. Wait, what do you mean? I'm sorry. Please don't contact me again. William, wait, what's going on? The call ended abruptly, and all attempts to reach him were blocked. I was confused about what happened and went to my parents' house a few days later. There seemed to be guests over. I saw Emma and a guest's back in the usual gathering room. In front of them were my grandparents, and beside Emma, I recognized William's back. They turned around, William and Emma. Emma's smug, triumphant smile burned into my memory. In that moment, I ran outside. My mother, who brought tea, seemed to talk to me, but I don't remember. I found myself crouching on a park bench. The rain started to pour, getting heavier, but I didn't care. Then my phone rang. It was from Emma. I'm sorry, Emma, Emma said, but she didn't sound remorseful at all. What do you mean by this? I just wanted William for myself. Her voice reminded me of how she used to beg for toys or food when we were little. Remember, I said I wish I had met him first. Emma and William had exchanged numbers when we met as three and had been meeting secretly. They even became intimate recently. Why? Why would you do this? Oh, Emma, you knew, didn't you? What's yours is mine. Being nice to William was all a lie to make him mine. Thank you for introducing such a wonderful man to me. It's only natural it turned out this way. I'm more attractive than you. It was just a matter of order. Bye. 
The call ended abruptly. I changed my phone number, canceled my apartment lease, and changed jobs. I couldn't continue to work at the same place as William. I cut off ties with my family, including Emma, and hadn't seen them since. Emma's claim about finding my social media account was true, as she sent me a friend request. Her account was full of happy, glittering posts. One of them was posted just five minutes ago. Finally found my dear sister's account after contacting her for the first time in a while. Such a modest life. I couldn't imagine living like that, but she's still my only beloved sister. She even linked to my account in the post, which attracted many comments from her friends. Really, it's hard to believe she's Emma. A sister living like that. She hasn't changed a bit since I last saw her, but Emma, you're wonderful to still care for her. I couldn't bear it anymore and turned off my phone. It seemed like she sent me the friend request just to show off. My old feelings towards Emma resurfaced. I couldn't keep tolerating her. A desire for revenge began to grow within me. On the day of our grandmother's funeral, I showed up as Emma had demanded. Oh, you came. Just like in your social media post, such a plain look. Hello, William looks well. Uh, William averted his gaze uncomfortably. I never intended to see them again, but I couldn't refuse my grandmother's last wish, who always cared for me despite my grandfather's shadow. Mom, who is this? A boy about five years old approached. He looked like Emma. This is my sister. Ha, huh, you look old. Mom is prettier. He said it innocently, reminding me of a young Emma. Isn't that nice? Let me introduce you. This is my son, Thomas. He goes to a private kindergarten. The entrance exam was tough, but he's smart like William, my pride and joy. Emma spoke with a triumphant look. You're alone, Emma. Oh right, you're not married. I saw it in your post. No ring in the photo of your hand. Oops, my mistake. She was referring to an old post of mine. Being single at 40 is like being past your expiration date. My husband is rich, handsome, and a genius. Emma laughed uncontrollably. Mom, then Charlotte, ran up to me. Careful, Charlotte. Running is dangerous. Sorry, but it looked like Mom was being bullied. Noah, who had parked nearby, came over and picked up Charlotte. Ha, huh, Mom. Well, I might as well introduce them now. This is my husband, No Brown, the hospital director of a nearby hospital, and our daughter, Charlotte. Wait, No Brown, the youngest ever director of Williams Hospital? Yes, that's right. No and I met when I got a new job at the hospital after cutting ties with my family. At the time, No was a fledgling doctor drawn to my careful patient interactions and efficient support of doctors and nurses. We started dating. Sincerely, Emma and William were dumbfounded. Unaware or not of his parents' shock, Thomas exclaimed, Ah, it's Charlotte. Charlotte, you mean from the Charot channel with 300,000 subscribers? I always watch the Charot channel. I thought she was cute. Can we be friends? Thomas approached Charlotte, held by Noah, with a friendly, adorable smile. No, I don't like you. You were mean to my mom. Charlotte turned away with a pout. At her words, Thomas let out a surprised ha. Huh. Then he turned back to Emma and glared sharply at his own mother. Hey, it's all mom's fault, stupid. Ha, huh. wait. Thomas. Thomas ran off crying, and Emma, hesitating to follow, turned sharply towards me. What's this? Despite your plain posts, you, just so you know, I have more followers than you, Emma. Oh, about that. I don't put much effort into my own posts. It's Charlotte's channel that I focus on. And about the ring, I had been keeping our wedding rings on a necklace hidden under my clothes. I took it out. We wear our wedding rings on necklaces. Sorry for not saying, but we hide them under our clothes to prevent Charlotte from pulling them when she was smaller. What? What's that? How did you, so plain, manage to marry such a high-end man? Emma, stop it. What, William? You think the same, right? She's plainer than me. 
Stop it, I said. William grabbed Emma's arms, forcing her to face him. Listen, Emma's husband is the director of the hospital where I work. She's the director's wife. Emma fell silent, tears in her eyes, as William glared at her. I'm terribly sorry, no. My wife has been incredibly rude to your wife. I'm terribly sorry, Emma. William showed his respect to us, while Emma still glared at him. It's okay. That's enough for us today. It's my wife's beloved grandmother's funeral. I hear we'd like to attend if that's all right. Of course. Right, Emma. Uh, yes, please. After that, everything went smoothly, and I said my final goodbye to my beloved grandmother. I introduced my husband and daughter to my parents. My mother was tearfully happy, while my father, still favoring Emma, kept a stern face. My mother asked me to visit again, but it was difficult. I could only respond with a giggle. A few days later, with a sense of foreboding, I opened my social media. Knowing Emma's cunning, I suspected she might have posted something to mock me about our recent encounter. Sure enough, there was a new post from a day ago on Emma's page. It featured a photo of Charlotte's back, accompanied by this text. Happily ran into Charlotte from Charot Channel. She was smiling and kind, even gave my son an autograph. Here's a picture of Charlotte's back. It must have been a photo taken at some point that day. The photo cleverly blurred the background against her black clothes. I was astonished at Emma's relentless self-promotion. The comments were filled with voices saying, Amazing, I'm so jealous. I left a comment of warning and request. Please delete that photo immediately. Don't lie about the autograph. Then a new post appeared from Emma, complete with a screenshot of my comment. Jealousy is so unattractive. I would never lie, you know. The comment section was filled with people defending Emma, making it seem as if I was the bad one. It was like some silly skit, just like her previous post. Realizing that anything further I said to Emma would be futile, I made the necessary post as a parent on the Charot channel's social media and videos. I informed that the photo of Charlotte on social media was taken without permission, that she can't write autographs yet, so that was also a lie, and that I requested its removal but was ignored. I also made a video about internet literacy for kids, with Charlotte explaining why you shouldn't post someone's photo without permission. The video, easy for children to understand, received many positive comments. A few days later, I received a friend request from a different account belonging to Emma. What are you going to do about it? My account got suspended. I wasn't expecting an apology, but her first message like this made me ashamed to be related to her. Apparently, she created a new account. I wonder where she gets the motivation for her social media activity from. It's your fault for ignoring my request and posting someone else's child's photo online without permission. It's crazy. What's the big deal? We're relatives. I should be able to enjoy a little fame. That's her true nature. Beyond sympathy, I've made many posts perfecting the photo angles each time. Now it's all for nothing. Why don't you try hard with your new account? Just avoid posting lies. I don't need you to tell me that. Please stay out of my life from now on. Despite her approaching me first, she spoke as if I was the one interfering. Her self-centered world continues to spin happily. Emma still posts shiny, seemingly fulfilled photos, not only mom friends but also friends from her time at the elite school, whom she used to invite for tea at home, appear often. Then I received another friend request, this time from an unfamiliar name but with a recognizable face in the profile photo, a friend from Emma's elite school days. Hello, you're Emma's sister, right? Yes, that's me. After a polite introduction, she shared some troubling news. Actually, I'm having a bit of trouble because of Emma. Trouble? What kind of trouble? What she revealed was astonishing. Emma claimed to have some leverage over her friends from the elite school, forcing them to throw parties for her posts and even showing up uninvited at their homes. Is that true? Yes, 
I thought it was just me, but others are in the same situation. When Emma's account got suspended, she turned to me, hoping for help since I had commented on the issue. The supportive comments on her posts were also forced. But what kind of leverage does she have on you? She mentions things I don't remember, but the absence of memory isn't proof. She claims to have evidence of this leverage. I was appalled by Emma's reckless scheme and advised her friend, that's probably a lie. Emma lives in a world where she's the center, so she thought it would work. Ask her to show the evidence and press her about it. After this conversation, a mom friend of Emma's reached out with a similar story. It seems that in the past few days, there's been a noticeable decrease in the number of friends appearing in Emma's posts, which felt odd. I gave the same advice, and gradually Emma's friends disappeared from her posts. Both individuals reported back that there was no evidence of any leverage. I've since become friends with both of them. Emma's posts have become noticeably lonelier compared to before. To borrow her words, Emma's life had become rather plain. About a week later, No started coming home late. It seemed something was happening at work. The hospital was somewhat abuzz, and even when I visited with some snacks, everyone seemed hurried. The nurses were very grateful for the snacks, but when I suddenly inquired, they responded, we can't say, and I ended up feeling awkward to them, causing them to feel embarrassed. A few days later, when his work had calmed down, No came home late, and without even stopping to look at Charlotte's sleeping face, as he usually did, spoke to me with a serious expression. It's about William, Emma's husband. What about William? It turned out William had made a medical error. Apparently, the past few days had been spent dealing with necessary hospital procedures and addressing patients and their families. It seems William was trying to hide it, but it was discovered after an anonymous message to the hospital. No conveyed to me with a grave face that such actions were unacceptable for a doctor responsible for lives. Yes, I agree. A doctor entrusted with lives should never betray the trust of their patients. Right, that's why we had to ask William to leave. It's essentially a dismissal. Furthermore, William had a bad attitude at work, making his re-employment prospects slim. Noah was aware of my family situation, as I had told him during my grandmother's funeral. He talked to me about Emma's family out of concern. I later learned about Emma's subsequent situation through a phone call from someone. It's been a while, Emma. Mom, my mother, who had been restricted from contacting me by my father, told me that Emma had been disowned by our family. Emma, it turned out, had divorced William after his medical error came to light and their constant fights became unbearable. With William losing his job and financial stability, Thomas ended up in a facility. This incident also seems to have revealed Emma's true colors to my father. So you didn't take in Thomas. Neither dead nor I could do it. We're old and might need a facility ourselves soon. It was hard to say no, but after Dad disowned Emma for her divorce, it was difficult. My mother felt responsible for spoiling Emma and turning her into what she became, saying, we couldn't do the same to our grandson. They decided to provide some financial help to their grandson, but anonymously through the facility. Then my mother started crying repeatedly, saying, sorry. I told her it was okay. I knew she and my grandmother had tried their best, but it's also true that I don't have many good memories of that house, so I asked for a continued distance. Emma, let's go to the amusement park next weekend. Charlotte would like that, right? I want to go. I'll ride the ladybug coaster. That's great, Charlotte. Oh, I'll film it and share all the fun things with everyone. During a family dinner where we all were together for the first time in a while, we planned our next outing. Filming, then I better dress up too. No, Daddy can't be in it. Daddy belongs to Charlotte and Mommy, okay. Maybe Mommy should dress up then. Charlotte puffed out her cheeks in response. No, I don't want everyone to know how cute my Mommy is. But you brag about me to your kindergarten friends, don't you? Well, yes, but, Charlotte sulked, 
I'd be troubled if everyone knew how cute mommy is. I was surprised by Noah, who strongly nodded, but also very happy. I love them both so much. I want to continue living this peaceful and happy life.